Welcome back to another episode of Jack's Tech Corner. This is a continuation of video Photoshop Elements 6. And I'm your host Jack, and as you can see from the screen here, we are on a Mac. So this is pointed to the Mac users out there. But hey, if you're a PC user, you can also watch this. Maybe you have Photoshop loaded and you want to learn a little bit about using Bridge. Now by default, and I can't find any way to do it, Photoshop Element 6 load on a Mac does not come with the organizer. So we have no organizer, and I think that's because of a relationship that Adobe made with Apple, because you already have iPhoto, which is pretty much does the same thing the organizer does. So why do you need two programs? But they did throw in Bridge, and I don't exactly know why they threw Bridge in, but we had a few people comment and say, Jack, is Bridge better than iPhoto? It's a personal choice and it's up to you, whichever one you want to use. I tend to use iPhoto because I know it. Um, and playing with iPhoto, there seems to be more in it um, stock than what Bridge has. But I wanted to show you Bridge just in case you want to use Bridge. Now, first thing you'll notice is if we click on a picture in Bridge, we have metadata. The metadata gives me some information from my Nikon cameras. One is the f-stop, we have shutter speed, we have the metering uh, system here, what white balance I used, and then we have some information here, the total size of the picture, megapixels, the total um, megabytes of the picture, and the actual DPI or, B, or PPI of the picture, which is 300. Then you have information down here like you would expect to see normally. Now we'll go on to keywords. Keywords, you can put keywords in here as many as you wish to have in here. And actually, I'm going to see if I can't uh, create a keyword for you. Let's see if we can delete this keyword. Uh, yep, we're going to delete that. Uh, we're going to delete this one. Yes, and maybe it won't let us delete it. All right, now maybe we can delete it. Okay. Now, now we have that deleted, I'm going to show you how to create that once again. To create a new group in your keywords, just simply go down and click on the little plus sign. It's going to say new keyword. But remember, the main plus sign here is, I like to refer to this as a group. And we're going to call this places to visit. Once you have it typed in there, just simply hit the enter key. Now to create a subgroup under places to visit, just simply click on this new sub keyword. And we're going to put in here parks. And then hit enter. Now you have a new title group. Here, see how that looks? It's darker. New title group as well as a new keyword underneath. You can use this as a keyword, but I tend to use these more often. Now, to assign a keyword to a picture, all we have to do is select a picture and go over and put a check mark on the keyword. And when you do that, you'll notice on the left-hand side under Filter, under Keywords, Parks is now showing up. And you can see Parks actually has three pictures in it. So when you go out and you want to find your pictures, it makes it easier because we can go over here in the keywords and just simply click on like graduation, uh, a name, or here's the Parks I did earlier. And you can click on multiples. Say if you're looking at graduation and kids, maybe you want to see different pictures in those. And looking at the pictures, you can see how they're very small thumbnails. Let's go ahead and increase that. We do that just by a slider bar, just like we did in the organizer. Or and you can also see this in iPhoto. We can actually make those bigger. So now we can see what's going on. Okay. Now I want to just show you a few different ways you can lay out this screen. This is the default layout. If you go under Window and Workspaces, Let's go to light table. 
Light Table is almost like Adobe's new uh, Lightroom, how they wrote that new software. And this is kind of a default layout uh, with that program from what I've seen. You can click on a picture. You can rearrange them any way you wish to rearrange them. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can. You have that option. We can click on multiple pictures. You can right click in here, get on the stack like we did in the organizer, and we can stack pictures. So you can kind of clean up your organizer a little bit with this view. It's really nice. Let's ungroup those. Now go to Window. Let's look at File Navigator. File Navigator simply gives us our folders over here on the left, so we can just simply click through those pretty easily. Okay. Metadata Focus. I do like this. This metadata focus, if you're taking multiple shots using, say, different white balances or different um, uh, shutter speeds or f-stops, this is a nice way where you can view the pictures and know what settings you had your camera on. So this is a nice view. Go back to here. Go down to horizontal film strip. Horizontal film strip is a film strip horizontally, right? Makes very uh, makes a lot of sense. And if you would rather see it the other way, we have vertical film strip. And any of these can be switched on and off just by using your command keys. You would use your command and then F2 or F3 to change these. So if you if you're into keyboard shortcuts. And I find this is nice if I'm doing shots in a portrait view where I turn the camera up on end. I can see a lot clearer on my screen without scrolling. Let's go back here. We're going to jump back into the default view. Now if you go up here, you can take any of these pictures. You can go to File, burn them to a DVD or CD, attach them to an email. You can move these to a different folder or we can copy. Remember, folks, when you move, it's physically moving from one place to another. When you copy, you're making a backup copy of that picture. You can place it in Elements, so you can open up the picture in Elements. And you can add it to Favorites. And Favorites is not your favorites in your web browser or bookmarks. A favorite is pictures. Let's say if you take three or four hundred wedding pictures and you have a hundred of those you want to show to the bride and groom, maybe you would add those to favorites as you go through and then later on you could find those very quickly to make your portfolio for the uh, bride and groom or your contact sheets or whichever you want to actually print out. You also have the option of labeling with stars. We can use stars. We can reject the picture which is not deleting it, it's just marking as rejected. That way you won't include it in anything. And you have approved down here, you have reviews and to do's. If you right click on a picture, you can open it with Adobe Element 6. It opens up very easily with Adobe Element 6. And it should because this is tied in with the program anyway. With that, oh, excuse me. With that, folks, I think I'm going to wrap this tutorial up. That should give you enough to get started with using Bridge. Thanks to everybody that commented and asked me about uh, using Bridge with the Mac. That yeah, was a good topic. And hopefully I'll see you back here very soon with more uh, video uh, tutorials on Photoshop Element 6. And I'm also working on some uh, other ideas for new tutorials. So there will be more and more of them on the YouTube site. So hopefully you'll subscribe. And thanks to those of you who have been subscribing. And please, by all means, post those comments. I read all the comments. It's probably even better than telling you to email me with ideas. Just post a comment in there and then everybody else can see it and know what's going on. So until next time, have a great weekend and keep editing. I'll see you back here soon. Bye for now.